Morning everyone. Hi. Welcome to your next Criminology Lockdown Special. This is for Unit 2, 1.2, our second round. Let's get started. So, make myself smaller. That should do it. Make this bigger. All right, wonderful. So, this is now Unit 2. This is topic 1.2. This is leading on from last week's topic, uh, topic 1.1, where we had a look at crime and deviance and how actions can be one or the other or both. We are now going to explain the social construction of criminality. How does society affect criminality, crime, criminals, etc.? So, what we will study, how criminality is socially constructed and how, how laws change from culture to culture, how they change over time, and how they are applied differently according to circumstances. These are the three things that we're going to work through and the three things that you will be uh, tested on in the exam on these areas. What does it mean then to say that laws are socially constructed? It means they're made and decided by society, the society that you live in. They are not naturally occurring, so they don't occur without human interaction. They don't occur naturally within nature. They are defined and decided by a particular society, so they remain within that society that decide them. Laws are therefore subject to change over time and between cultures. So um, they will change over time within that culture, within that society, but also societies themselves, cultures themselves will have different laws. So, I would like you now to write down three changes that you have found relating to homosexuality. So, go back to what you researched last time. So, you did this bit of research for the last topic area. And write down three ways that the law has changed relating to homosexuality. So, laws vary from culture to culture. First of all, can you think of any examples? Obviously, your own examples, the more of your own examples you can use, the better. Um, I will always provide you with examples. It's always good to have a look at your own. So can you think of any examples where laws differ from culture to culture or society to society? One example is polygamy. Do you know what polygamy is? So think of poly... Poly means more than one. So polygamy means more than one, normally more than one wife, but it could mean more than one husband. Polygamy means multiple wives. So polyandry is multiple husbands. Polygam polygamy is legal in 58 countries. Polyandry is in very, very few, mainly the Himalayan cultures. It tends to happen in countries with a Muslim majority. India and the Philippines allow it for Muslims only. It is illegal in most countries, even some Muslim ones such as Turkey. So it's illegal in Turkey. The UK, it is a crime for bigamy to go through marriage ceremony while being married to somebody else. And if you do, you could get up to a seven-year prison sentence, a fine or both. So polygamy is legal in 58 countries. It is illegal in the UK. But then certain countries where it is legal or certain cultures where it's legal, like within the Muslim community, it's illegal in Turkey where the Muslims live there. So why does polygamy vary? Why does the law on polygamy vary over different cultures? It could be based on two different reasons. The first could be the religion, could be the reason why the changes uh, and the differences. So religion, the Quran allows men to have up to four wives. In the USA, some Mormons, for example, practice it illegally. So it used to be legal, uh, but then was made illegal. So Mormons cannot have multiple wives. There's um, a program on... 
uh, one of the show, one of the, the channels on TV called Sister Wives, it's a man, a, a Mormon family, that, and he, I think he has about seven wives, and they have a TLC uh, TV program or something like that. It could also be based on tradition. Although becoming less common in some African cultures, polygamy has been a traditional practice. So, I would now like you to have a go at an exam style question. This one's only worth two marks, it's only a two marker. I want you to use an example, describe how laws can vary between cultures. What might you include in your answer? So you can use the polygamy or maybe or homosexuality, um, how it may, because again, the homosexuality laws are very, very different uh, over different places. But maybe see if you can find your own as well. The higher level students, the higher level answers um, use varying and different examples. So always use my examples if you're struggling, but for something like this, I'm sure you could find your own example that you could use quite easily. All right, continuing. Laws change over time. So, for example, capital punishment. These are laws that have changed over uh, a time period. In Britain, it was allowed in the past capital punishment um, uh, death. So rather than just imprisonment, capital punishment is um, capital death. In Britain, it was allowed in the past for serious crimes such as murder, but also less serious crimes such as poaching, so shooting an animal on somebody else's land, pickpocketing, stealing. In 1723, the Black Act made 50 offences capital crime. So 50 different things you could do could end up in you being hanged or executed in some way. This has then changed over time. The number of capital crimes reduced gradually only for murder and treason, trying to kill the Queen or someone in the royal family or uh, a, a politician like Guy Fawkes. Fully abolished in 1969, but it remained for treason until 1998 with the Crime and Disorder Act. Now, I never knew that. I still thought it was uh, a capital punishment for treason. So I didn't know that it was actually 1998 that that, again, was removed as well. So there is nothing now that stands that you could uh, would result in capital punishment or result in death. So there's no act now that would result in the punishment of death. Laws change over time. For example, again, capital punishment will continue with the same example. So why did this law change? So why did the law change? First of all, the changing states of social groups, the attitudes towards human rights, and just wasn't effective as deterrent. It didn't put people off doing it. So even though the, the, the risk of death didn't put people off doing it, so there's no point doing it then if it's not as a deterrent. Um, Norbit Elias, sociologist who argues society evolving away from physical punishment was more civilised, more self-controlled. So um, what he was arguing there, uh, and there he is, what he is arguing there is we become more self-controlled. This is a way of society has evolved. Um, and also because of the high profile miscarriages of justice sometimes proven with DNA evidence. So Sometimes what's happened over the years, and again, do have a research into this fascinating, fascinating um, uh, information, um, is, all, is all the people that have been convicted over the years, have been sentenced to death, and then later with DNA, uh, blood samples, etc., has been found that they've actually been innocent, but they're dead, it's too late. So there's been very, very, uh, there's been a lot of um, high-profile miscarriages of justice. Um, and certainly, again, for the, the groups of people that we've been studying, so often, again, the stereotypical groups were the ones that were um, guilty before proving innocent. Um, you do not need to worry about the numbers, so you don't have to worry about the numbers. You just need to remember that there's maybe five main reasons why. So the numbers are just here to help you remember that there's five. So, over to you. I would like you now to do a little bit of research. I want you to research, first of all, how laws vary from culture to culture. So, I want you to find two more of your own laws. Uh, we've done polygamy, so you might want to have a look at adultery, homosexuality, cannabis use or honour killings. You can also do others if you wish. So, if you want to do two different ones from that, don't forget it's culture to culture. So, society to society, what we do in our culture, what someone else might do in their culture. And I want you to make notes on where it is a crime, where it is legal and reasons why you think this law varies. So that's the first thing I would like you to do.
The second thing I would like you to do is research how laws change over time, so over a time period, 100, 200, 300 years, etc. I want you to research the cases of Derek Bentley and Timothy Evans. They were hanged for murder. I want you to look at what happened and how did they contribute to the change in the law on the capital punishment. And I want you to find two more laws that have changed over time. So what's changed over time with smoking, with homosexuality, with divorce, with drugs, with prostitution, with laws relating to children. So again, you could pick two from there or two of your own, uh, two of your own, sorry, as long as it's over time. So as long as it's over a time period. What, what were the reasons for the changes? So again, why did these changes happen? Why did these changes come about? So this is what I would like to focus on for this first lesson. So I want you to make notes on all the slides that we've done so far. I want you to have a go at the two mark answer. And then I want you to spend the rest of the lesson focusing on the first research task and the second research task. So culture, culture, change over time. And then I'd like you to send me photos of your work, either to uh, email or to Teams, please. So that's your activities for your first lesson. So if you're in the first lesson now, please stop here. Um, because that is your activities for today. However, we are going to continue. So, how laws are applied differently according to circumstances. So, how the circumstances of the crime affect how the law can be applied. Normally, two people who commit the same crime should be treated in the same way. This is for fairness and justice. But, there are times when this might not occur. Again, can you think of any examples? Can you think of any examples where two people would do the same crime, but one might get a worse or lesser punishment? So, for example, do you remember when we did the mods and the rockers, the moral panics? This is a good example that we could use here. Um, so could you, going back, so go find your information. I think it's maybe 1.4, I guess. Um, have a look at the mods and the rockers. Uh, can you explain how moral panics, how people might have been treated differently during this time? Laws applied differently according to circumstances. The first is moral panics. Public outrage or fear in certain situations can mean the offenders are treated more harshly. Why? Because of fear. You want to teach them a lesson. Um, you're sending out messages to society um, that you don't want the rest of society to do it. So you're, you're setting a message, you're setting a signal, you're setting an example of, well, if you do it, something bad's going to happen. So it puts people off. Or a political advantage, a penal um, populism, this idea of pleasing the public to gain votes. So, for example, the London riots, we did have a look at this at the end of one lesson uh, in Unit 1. The London riots of 2011, the sentence are given to riots was 25% harsher on average than normal riots. Um, Nicholas Robinson was 23, was sentenced to six months in prison for stealing a £3.50 bottle of water uh, from Lidl. Again, a very, very harsh sentence, sending a message. Uh, and again, you're welcome to have a look into either of these into fur in further detail. Typifications. Now, you're thinking, hmm, I've come across that word before. That's because we have. Can you remember, though, what a typification is? A typification is an idea that's come from the work of Chambliss, who found police are more likely to arrest and charge certain people based on what group they belong to. So a typification is a bit like a stereotype. It's the type of classification that you fall into. So it's how police treat you, arrest you and charge you based on the group that you belong to. Chambliss studied two groups of youths, the saints, mostly middle class, and the roughnecks, mostly working class. So a bit like the mods and the rockers situation again. Chambliss found police tended to treat the roughnecks more strictly and harshly, whereas the saints probably got just a slap on the wrist. 
Um, Pilivin and Briar also found things like age, race, time of day and attitude to the police affected the police response to situations. So if a police officer has pulled you over and you're giving a lot of attitude, you're causing a lot of problems, a lot of raucous, you're really, really giving it to them, chances are that attitude towards the police will make them uh, react to you in a different way. Age, if you are a child, if you are an elderly person, maybe that might affect um, how the police treat you. Race, uh, again, we've had a look at a lot of the ways that race can um, affect the way that you are judged guilty or innocent. Uh, and again, think of all the Black Lives Matter protests, etc., that have been going on and where, where they have come from, where they've stemmed from. The age of criminal responsibility. Two people may be charged with the same crime, but one may be treated differently according to age. It may be regarded as too young to be held criminally responsible. And so what age do you think people should be held fully responsible for the crimes they commit? So have a think. What age do you think people should be responsible if they commit a crime? If you're saying an adult, what do you mean by adult? Do you mean somebody that is conscious of their actions? Um, or do you mean 16, 18? Can a child be held responsible for their actions? So if a child did something uh, really bad, how would you punish them? So what if a child stole something? Would you... Or maybe teenagers, do you think 13, how about 11? So what age, or do you think, uh, you know, 20s, 25? At what age do you think that people should be held responsible for the actions that they do? I think I'm going to set a paddle up for that one um, because I th I'll be very interested to know what your response is to that one actually is. In England, Wales and Northern Ireland, it is the age of Ten. Does that surprise you? Did you know that already? Scotland, it is 12. Do you think Scotland have it right? So do you think um, we are too young or do you think Scotland is too high or do you think it doesn't make really much of a difference? Nowhere in Europe has a lower age. We have special youth courts and young offenders units for people aged 10 to 17. And so what I would like you to do, please, and this is um, a case that we've mentioned in passing, but I think I would really like you to use this opportunity now to um, have a watch the documentary, maybe not research into it. Obviously, for some of you that have never come across this case before, um, a huge uh, warning comes with this one because the, the James Bulger case is ex is extremely delicate. It's of a very, very difficult nature. Um, so please be warned that this, is, this has... Um, uh, quite difficult content to uh, digest um, but the the one that I the clip I want you to watch please it's a 45 minute uh, YouTube clip um, it's called a mother's story so this is from James Bulger's mother um, and the police officers at the time who dealt with the situation of um, Venables and Thompson and so I want you to watch this you will need the first 20-25 minutes really to see how they were treated and how the difficulties surrounding their age really played a part in this but you're welcome to watch the rest of the documentary as well. Um, I would like you to answer that question. I'd like to summarise why it was so difficult sentencing Thompsons and Venables. So how did their age play a part? And if this was done in Scotland, how would the case have been quite different? So if this was in Scotland and it was 12 years old, well, they would be held responsible. What difference would that have made? Um, so that's the end of the second lesson, please. So I would like you to make your notes on what we've done so far about the age um, and the situations, etc. So this, this small section, and then obviously I'd like you to spend some time um, really watching this documentary uh, and making your notes, etc. because I imagine you'd have a lot to say about this one. All right, then your third lesson. So once you're ready for your third section, your third section, the last part of this PowerPoint, homicide or murder. The Homicide Act of 1957 allows for exceptions to the offence of murder when a person kills another. 
all these circumstances, if proven, can mean the mandatory life sentence can be reduced at the discretion of the judge or the person can be found not guilty at all. These depend on the circumstances. The first is diminished responsibility, where the defendant can show they were not in a normal mental condition capable of making a rational judgment. Again, it will be down to the judge and jury's discretion as to judging whether normal or not psychiatrists, psychologists, etc. Would, would be involved in this process as well. Loss of control. This is a partial defence and the offence can be reduced to manslaughter, e.g. when the person fears serious violence. Or finally, automatism. Automatism, automatism. Um, if the defendant can show the act was involuntary, so something happened but you didn't mean it to happen, e.g. the person has no knowledge that the offence has taken place, such as if a person kills their spouse while sleepwalking. However, this is rarely used. All right, so... What I would like you to do, please, is I'd like you to research now, uh, watch the video clip about drug laws in Portugal. It's only eight minutes long, and I'm going to send you some questions in the email. Please open the questions in the email and please answer them for using that uh, clip, please. Uh, this is a good example of how laws have changed over time and between cultures. Um, I want you to then check and make sure, because this is the end of the topic, I want you to check and make sure that you know at least two good, thorough examples to show how laws have varied according to time, place and culture and circumstance. You need to know dates, statistics, examples, names. You have to know thorough, otherwise you'll never move higher than your one or two marks. So please spend your time now making sure your notes really cover that and your research involves that. Don't just rely purely on these PowerPoints. These PowerPoints are meant to springboard you into that further research. So please go out and research and write down those statistics, those numbers, those dates, those names, etc. Finally, the final thing that we're going to do is an exam style question. So, this one is a biggie. This is a biggie. This is a nine marker. With reference to examples, analyse how laws change over time, place and culture. So actually, when you think about it, it's just three marks for each of them. Three marks for time, three marks for place, three marks for culture. So again, you could quite easily, by the time you say how they change over time... Uh, you then give an example of how they change over time um, and you kind of compare and analyse it. That's your one of, you know, one, two and three max. And again, you do the same for place. Explain how they change over place. You give an example and analyse. That's your one, two, three max there. So quite straightforward when you break down. You should be able to see quite clearly how you get your max for each part. So if you get six max, chances are they're talking about two different things. So, for example, in the previous one, in 1.1, if it talks about crime and deviance in the question, it's worth six max three for crime three for deviance what are they give an example analyze or compare them and there's your six marks so it's quite easy to see how your marks are distributed it's very very much like it was at GCSE where you kind of get a mark a point so an example is always a mark so if you do not give examples you lose your mark immediately there so how would you answer this question what important elements do you want to include? Um, and uh, you would normally, you'd have about 11 minutes to answer this. So just over a, a minute a mark. So what example would you use for time? You could talk about homosexuality or the death penalty. You need to give specific details like dates before and after. So again, that's what your research will have brought out. Place, what example would you use? You could do polygamy or smoking cannabis. Culture, what example would you use? You could do honour killing, uh, FGM, adultery. So again, these are just um, ideas or options. You can pick other ones from your research that you've done. As long as it's time, passing of time, place, so what country you're in, where you're actually at, culture. So you could be in the same place like England, but have different cultures that have different, uh, different things that they do. But they all could still be against the law, for example. I want you to analyse the reasons for the changes and differences. Um, and is it because of religion, tradition, social change? Is it attitude change? Is it scientific advances? Is it miscarriages of justice or something else? So those, again, are where you get your two marks from. Your example, you need to analyse the reasons for changes and differences. So why has it changed over time? Why is it different over time? Why, is, why was it 
a law then and not now? And is it because of one of those things or two of those things? Or is it because of religion it's different? Is it because of tradition it's different, etc.? So again, you need to explore them reasons why um, and explore them. And so what we're going to do to help you is I'm going to send you script A and script B, some past answers. Uh, one got five marks and one got seven marks. I would like you to decide which one got the five and which one got the seven. And then I would like you to improve the seven markers up to the full nine. So what would you add to the seven marker to get the full nine marks? So at this stage, I just want you to make notes on this slide. I want you to write it down. I want you to think about what examples you would use. I want you to think about how you would link your reasons and your analysis. And then I'm going to using the scripts. So I'll send you the scripts using the scripts. I want you to work out which one got which marks. And then I want you to improve the seven markers. So how would you get that the final few marks? What is missing from what you have here uh, that you can add? Hopefully you found that uh, easy enough to follow everyone. So you've got your three different lessons there. So your first one up to your two research tasks, your second one up to the James Bulge case, and then obviously this is your third section. Um, as you can see, we are integrating that exam technique. So um, obviously I'm still marking your previous ones from your previous slides. So this one is more of an ongoing activity that you're doing now. But it's important that we do develop that technique as to how to get those um, marks in the exam. You must do the research that I'm indicating though. You have to go and do your research and enjoy it. These 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 things that you're researching are meant to be enjoyable, are meant to be interesting. So really see what you can find. See if you can find some really different examples of how they emphasise these things. Uh, and of course, any problems or questions, do send me either an email or drop me a message uh, under this video. Um, and I'll be on to the next one, the next video shortly. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye for now. Let's make you smaller. Thanks, everyone.